you so much, Justine, and thank you all for being here. It is such a privilege. Oh my goodness, who's excited to be with real people again? Like, just give your neighbour a little squeeze on their knee. Just give them a little squeeze. I was so thrilled to fly out today from Palmerston North to be here with you tonight because it's been a long time since I've done that much flying around. I'm doing lots of virtual presenting and it's such a pleasure. So nice to meet so many of you already. So tonight I want to share with you three keys, uh, yeah, three keys to help you feel vibrant and energised. Does that sound good? Because I'm hearing a lot of people are feeling tired, exhausted and burnt out after the year that we've all had. We've all been grieving things and that is really tiring, really hard on that brain gut axis as you've shared so well. And yeah, it's been a tough year. So let's take a deep breath and dive on in. So my vision is to equip and inspire you to truly boost both your health and happiness for life. And I see those two things as being inextricably linked. Would you agree? Your health and your happiness, that we can't really have one without the other. And my background, really briefly, is that I was actually the shy, unsporty kid back at school, like always last to be picked for sports, totally lacked confidence in myself. And somehow, after going on exchange to France and then coming back, I went to uni in a, and I joined the gym for some reason, but I was totally intimidated by the gym. Anyone else relate to that? Like I'd walk in there and I'd see these people with these bars on their shoulders, with these circles on the end, doing these movements. And I, and I didn't even know what it was called, and I would think to myself, oh, I could never do that. But one day, a friend dragged me along to a step aerobics class. And so I went, and I didn't die, and I didn't hate it, and so I went back. And after going a few times, I said, if you want to be an instructor, just come and see us afterwards. So I did, with a bit of anxiety, but I did. And that was actually monumentally life-changing for me. James Clear, in his book, Atomic Habits, he talks about how a habit change is, first of all, an identity change. And that event of doing that instructor training course was life-changing for me, because I, I learned three things. First, I discovered that I actually had enough rhythm to do choreography. So that was a small bonus. Secondly, I discovered there was someone that believed in me, and that was Amy, my boss at the time, and she was amazing. Never underestimate the power that you have when you believe in another human being. And thirdly, I discovered that I was actually capable of more than I first imagined. And I believe that that is true for all of us. So I want to start by telling you tonight, my friend, that you are capable of so much more than you could ever imagine. You absolutely are. And if there is something that you want to improve about your health, your well-being, about your enjoyment of life, your life satisfaction, you absolutely can. And part of the reason that I know that is because of little old Lauren Parsons from Palmerston North New Zealand, the shy, unsporty kid, the glutton living in France, and totally intimidated by the gym, if little old me can go on to help thousands of people boost their health and happiness and to talk about it on a TED stage, little old me can do that, then you, you can do anything. You really can. But there's this one key to getting started, and that is to understand this thing called the knowledge action gap. Have you heard of this? The knowledge action gap. And that's, you know, the, sometimes there are things that we know we could do, or perhaps should do, and then there's actually what we do day to day. And so my goal and passion is always about helping people to close that knowledge action gap. And it's what I love doing. So mostly I do work in workplace wellbeing, and I work with leaders, business leaders, and help them to create a positive, energised culture. But it's all about taking science-backed, evidence-based research, positive psychology, and what we know about human beings and trust and real well-being, and actually giving you practical outcomes. So I want to give you these three tips today. Is that all right? And my hope, as I say, is not that you walk away and go, oh, that was interesting. Because remember, I want to equip and inspire you to create some change in your life. So I hope that you can put one of these into practice. And I also just want to share some stories about all of my failures, basically, because I really believe in vulnerability and authenticity. So my husband's in the military, by the way, which is why I've moved so much. It does sound a bit strange. We've been married 17 years. We've moved 11 times, six times internationally. Lived in Paris, France, Ottawa, Canada, Canberra, Australia, Wellington, and now in the Manawatu. Uh, so anyway, when we were living in Canada, we were over there two years ago in Ottawa, which is snowbound for six months of the year, and we lived in this beautiful little cul-de-sac in a little community, and my kids went to the local school and the local kindy. Uh, who's, who are parents in here tonight? Can I just have 
Yeah? A lot of parents around, okay. And, and whether you're a parent or not, you can hopefully relate to this on some level. But as Mama Bear, my job was to get the girls out the door, I've got three daughters, get them out off to kindy and to school. My husband would get up at five and head off to work early, which was great, because he came home early. But every morning my job was to get the kids up and fully kitted out, you know, snow boots, snow pants, snow jackets, double mittens, black, you know, balaclavas, hats. If it was below minus 25 degrees, they couldn't play outside, but anything else, go for your life. And so we'd walk a kilometre to school, and the thing to know is that they're locked down schools. So if you didn't arrive within the 10 minute window to drop your child off at school, you would have to walk a further half a kilometre around, and then you'd have to line up at the office like a naughty kid, which was just that sinking feeling, anxiety levels up here. And so every morning I would start with the best intentions. And I think today's going to be a good day. And sadly, inevitably, every morning turned into tears and shouting and storming out and slamming doors, me included. And honestly, it actually breaks my heart to tell you, and and I can remember the first time I shared this, and then the the event organisers told me afterwards they'd been live streaming my talk to my little local business group of ladies, and I was like... (gasps) And I was devastated because I thought, I don't want people to know that I've shouted at my kids. That's just so heartbreaking to me as a parent. And honestly, if there'd been a a fly on the wall seeing me in those parenting failure moments. But what I've learned is it's actually really powerful for me to share it. And hello, I was talking about authenticity. So I had to let them keep the live video up, right? So anyhow, this is happening and it's getting to the point that my anxiety levels are so high that the night before I'm thinking, how am I even going to get through the morning? Am I going to walk home from school once again in tears, thinking, what am I doing to my kids long term? And so I realised that something had to change, and I realised that my kids were not the problem at all. They were totally fine. They were just normal kids. I realised I had to change. I had to start with me. And so what I did is I set my alarm 10 minutes earlier, which as a night owl, hands up who are all the night owls in the room here with me? Or well, some of you are like, okay... As a night owl, that was tough, but I set my alarm 10 minutes earlier, and I created a morning routine by throwing the curtains open, putting on my favourite music, and for the four minutes that that song played, I would do a stretching, strengthening routine, breathe diaphragmatically, think about what I was grateful for, set a positive intention for the day, and again, referencing James Cleary, and that's called habit stacking. You can do all those things at the same time. And so what that did, those four minutes transformed my life. Because then I was this calm, centred, patient, creative mum who could go in and be more fun, be much better at dealing with all the challenges. And, you know, 99% of the time, we all left the house as if we all still really loved each other. So I share that story because I, I believe we can relate to stories. And so my number one tip for you is to think about bookending your day well. Bookend your day well. Have a great morning routine. Have a great evening routine. Because you can't always control what happens in the middle of your day, Right? But you can choose to bookend your day well, and especially that morning routine, your first precious moments of the day. I have a lot of clients that tell me they straight away pick up their phone, which is their alarm, and they're there in bed at 5.30, checking emails, alerts, notifications, negative news. (gasps) Even before their feet have touched the floor for the day. So I don't know if this is hitting home for any of you, but I've coached a lot of clients that are business owners through this COVID period, and that has been one of the essentials for many of them. One of my clients emailed me and she said, Lauren, my time is mine, because she decided not to check her email until it was actually time to go to work. And so her three hours at home with her children was her time with them, rather than having this negativity going in her mind, thinking, how am I going to deal with this? So that's my number one tip, is think about how you can bookend your day well, especially in your morning routine. And, you know, I could talk for hours on sleep and sleep routines, but I actually believe that we're just like babies. You know, babies need that lovely routine of bath and cuddles and stories and dim lighting so they can drift off to sleep, or hopefully they can. And as adults, we're actually much the same. So I invite you to think about your morning routine, your evening routine. Think about how you can bookend your day well. And what's the, what a beautiful thing that you can do at the end of the day is a progressive muscle relaxation. Thank you so much, Justine, for the meditation that we did. You know, just focusing on our breath, seeing how we feel physically. So powerful. Actually, again, just to share an honest example, I had a really emotional meeting this morning uh, about something which I won't go into, but it left me really agitated as I was getting on the plane today to come here, and I thought, oh, I need to get grounded, I want to try and share something good tonight for all of you, 
And so I actually just lay on my bed in my hotel room and played this progressive muscle relaxation that I'd recorded a few weeks ago for one of my clients. And they really enjoyed it, so I shared it with a few more people. And so I've actually created this recording. So I'd love to gift that to you if you're interested. And it's just about tensing and releasing all the tension out of your muscles, focusing in on your diaphragmatic breath. So it's something I've just decided to, to make it up as a gift. So if anyone would like that, you're very welcome to um, pass on your details. And I'd love to email that out to you. And I'd love to stay in touch with you and share more inspiration. So I've also got a prize pack. So if you want to take the time to do that, I'd love to send that recording out to you and stay in touch. So that's number one, bookend your day well. Number two, I want to talk about this crazy little idea that I have, these three little words, and that is to snack on exercise. Is that okay? Is it okay to use that word? Like I know it's kind of, it's almost like, it's a very unpopular word. I know they said no swearing in the briefing tonight, so I hope that that doesn't offend anyone, but you know, it's challenging because I did come from a background of, I was a personal trainer, I was a lecturer at the New Zealand College of Fitness, a teaching personal training, anatomy, physiology, personal training and nutrition, and then I got qualified as a life coach, and so I've worked in wellness for the last 20 years. So you might think, oh, well, you've got it sussed, you must love exercise, but you know, I'm just like everyone else. I need to do the things that will help me to stay in balance, as we all do. But often when we hear that word, the word exercise, it's like we think, oh, do you know? Do you ever feel that? Some of you may not, you may be converted. But often we feel like, oh, I've got to do more of it, something that should be on my should-do list, right? But I actually think that it shouldn't be on your should-do list. And so I have a, a, a kind of a unique way of looking at it. And this is because... In my early 20s, I was actually the gym manager of a large gym down in Christchurch, but I did a terrible job. Again, my failures, just want to share them with you. You see, I thought that I was too busy to exercise, even though I was in charge of the trainers out on the gym floor. Like, how, how poor a job is that? Not even getting out on the gym floor to set the example for my team and for our members. Instead, I just sat in my back office, like just chained to my desk. But one day, I did further study, and I discovered there were all these myths about exercise that I had believed. And I found out that you didn't need to do multiple exercises, you could just do three exercises and work every muscle in your body. So I came up with this routine that had three exercises, and guess what? I found time to do it, because it only took me about six minutes. And after doing that twice a week, a month later, I had doubled my bench press strength and tripled my squatting strength. And I also learnt the word squat by that stage, which was also a bonus, so I knew what I was doing. And so, you know, this really astounded me, because I thought, wow, how many other people are missing out on the benefits of exercise because they too believe in myths? So let's just do a quick poll. Can I invite you to raise your hand if you're busy? Just invite you to raise your hand nice and high if you're busy, you're fairly busy in your life right now. Just see past the light. So it's about, about 80%. Okay, thank you. And now just raise your hand if you brush your teeth every day. Okay, I'm just going to look and just check right down the back. Have a look around, you know, just check on your neighbour. Okay. All right, I think we're all good. So I think we're at 100% there, right? So isn't it interesting that even when you're busy, you still find time to brush your teeth, right? And how long are we supposed to brush our teeth for? Two minutes, right? So two minutes morning and night. What if you could take four little minutes, not just look after the small part of your body, but to look after your entire body? What if you could snack on exercise in short bursts? And it doesn't even have to be four minutes in a row. What if you could do one minute when you wake up, one minute mid-morning, one minute at lunchtime, and one in the afternoon? I hope that some of your eyes are lining up at this. Because the idea is that you can actually do something that will instantly boost your mood and boost your mental health and well-being, as well as make a dramatic difference to your physical well-being. So can I invite you all to stand up with me for a moment? Because we've been sitting down for a while. And, you know, I'm an aerobics instructor, so did you expect something? Or I used to be. Yeah, only if you're able to stand. So stand up if you're able to. You can still do this seated. Just invite you to reach your arms up nice and high, and then reach down. Reach higher, and then if you want to, reach lower. So add in that little squat move, manoeuvre. Beautiful. So just speed that up for me. Oh, stunning. Beautiful. Okay, now bring it in nice and close and do some uppercuts. So uppercuts there, that's it. Watch your neighbour. All right, let's do a sprint finish. So fast feet, let's hear it. Five, four, three. All right, and deep breath in. And breathe it out. All righty. And as you take your seat, just invite you to just do a body scan for me and think how you're feeling. How's your brain? How's your body? Whew. 
So you've just made yourself smarter. I bet you're sitting there thinking, woo, serotonin, dopamine, oh, coming from the gut, woo, I can feel it. You've just upregulated your body's physiology in terms of your happiness hormones. Okay, you can literally use this as a small intervention in your day to boost how you're feeling. And I've got so many examples of administrators in their office and they have an alarm that goes off and they get up into a dance party and then it's like straight back to work as if nothing happened. <laughs> but nothing didn't happen. So much happened. And they're like, oh, I thought it wasn't going to work, but man, we just get back on and just so focused. So it's going to make you more creative, more productive, more focused. If you want more innovation in your life, in your workplace, snack on exercise. Yeah, sound good? And if you're interested in the research, if you're interested in the research, there's a study by McMaster University where they took two groups and they got them to cycle on stationary bikes. One group, they got them to cycle at a steady rate for 50 minutes, or almost an hour, three times a week. And the other group, they got to do sprints, 20 second sprints. Can you picture that? So flat out for 20 seconds, just three times, with a warm up and a cool down. So 10 minutes total workout. And they also did that three times. And what they found when they compared the results in terms of fat loss, muscle adaptation, cardiovascular fitness, and insulin sensitivity, which relates to diabetes, was the results were virtually identical. Virtually identical, which is phenomenal, really, when you think these guys trained five times as long, almost an hour, and that the sprint group only did one minute of real exercise. They've replicated the studies as well with people just briskly walking up flights of stairs. So think about that in your work day. What could you do less than a minute, may not need to get a sweat up, that can revolutionise how you feel. So that's my number two, snack on exercise. Number three, maybe the most important of all, are you ready? And that is to know what's really selfish. And this is so important for all of you amazing, caring, loving people who give so much of yourself out to others. Are there any of you in this room? I bet you, know, you probably don't even want to put your hand up because you're so humble and amazing. But there are so many of us that spend so much time giving out to everyone else, running ourselves ragged, rushing around, so if that is you, let me just talk a little bit about the psychology of that, because I could say, hey, you should take time for self-care. You should put your own mask on first, but you've heard that before, right? And it still hasn't changed it, right? Because you still want to keep running around and looking after everyone else, because it's so important. So I hope in the next two minutes to give you a mindset flip so you can break out of that cycle. Does that sound good? Yep. Give me, nod your head if that sounds good. If you would like to break out of that cycle, yep, perfect. And some of you may have already broken free, and that's totally fine. But when I ask people, how do you feel about taking time out for you, just for you, no one else, how do you feel? Oh, I can hear it. people are whispering it. Guilty, yeah. What most people tell me is I feel selfish and then I feel guilty. And guilt is one of those really interesting human emotions that we will do anything we can to move away from. We'll go through all leaps and bounds to move away from guilt. So even though you want to take that time out to go for the walk or to sit and read your book or to have the cup of tea, somehow all of the jobs will just keep piling up because you don't want to feel guilt, so you'll be pushing away from it, right? So here's my mindset flip for you, that if you've got that, playing, that tape playing in your head, those that remember tape players, you know, like tape decks, if you've got that tape playing in your head, that taking time for me is selfish, I want you to hit eject on that baby and I want you to re-record over it Taking time for me is essential. What is it? Taking time for me is essential. essential. It so is. Now, that's not the mindset flip, but that's part of it. The thing is that when you take time for you, you fill up your own cup to overflowing so you have more energy and love and passion to give out to everyone else around you, right? And here's my little bit of tough love from me to you. When you don't do that and you end up walking around as the grumpy, tired, impatient version of yourself, that is actually what is selfish. That's what's selfish. I have to remind myself of this sometimes as well, you know, so I'm right there with you if that's impacting you. That is what is selfish. So when I say know what is selfish, just remember that when you don't take time for you and you end up being that grumpy mum like I was, as I shared so openly, <laughs> That is actually selfish. And so when you do remember, what is it? Taking time for me is essential. Oh, that's, you know, that's pretty good. But I think, come on, Auckland, we can do better than that. Okay, you ready? So taking time for me is essential. essential. I love it. Woo. 
So I really hope that that sticks with you, that you have that playing in your head from now on, and that you, when you're thinking, oh, I could do this thing for me, oh, and that guilt comes in, you remind yourself, taking time for me is essential. Because actually when I don't do it and I end up being that grumpy version, oh, that is selfish. So there you have it. I invite you, you know, there's so much more I could, I could speak for days and hours. I, I, this is why I run weekend retreats so that I can share it all. But my three keys, just to take away tonight, are to bookend your day well. Think about a phenomenal morning routine and set your intention for how you want to show up in your day. It will transform the course of your day. Have a great wind down routine for that quality sleep. Snack on exercise. Give me some jazz hands if you're excited about that, like one minute at a time, woo, through your day. And, and honestly, I'm excited. I want to create a global movement around that. So feel free to Google Snack on Exercise. You can watch the TED Talk, which is what my TED Talk was about. And please, please share it, because I would so appreciate to get that message out there, make it the new norm. And remember, taking time for me is essential. And remember what is really selfish, okay? So I'll leave that with you. I'm really looking forward to answering your questions. And now it's the break time, so I'll just be down the back if you want to come and enter to grab that uh, progressive muscle relaxation. I would so love to send it out to you and answer all your questions. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Thank you.